Welcome to Heaven Embassy Church Online. Tonight, tonight we are looking at grace and good works. It's a continuation of our lesson from last week uh, where Pastor Shannon will talk to us and I'll read the scriptures from the book of Titus. Uh, another colleague of Paul, the Apostle Paul. Uh, this is for Sunday's lesson, August the 25th. And of course, we've, we're led by our certified church planter, our pastor, the Reverend Larry D. Shannon of Tupelo, Mississippi. My name is Deacon Andy Hill, and I serve as his virtual deacon. And with that, I'll turn it over to Pastor Shannon. Good evening, Pastor Shannon. You're muted, Brother Pastor. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you, you can hear me now. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir, bro, Pastor. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Intro. Sunday school preview, August 25th, lesson 13. Bro, Pastor, switch uh, your screen. You, 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 you got your LD Shannon as the main screen, and we can't okay. see the. Uh, you can't see the. The okay, intro. hold on a minute. Yeah, just okay. switch. Okay, hold on here. What about now? Let me see something. Let me stop sharing and share again. Yeah, yeah. I think let me let me, sh let me share again. Um, Can you see welcome. anything now? Yes, sir. Yeah, we good now. Welcome, Minister okay. Vitalis. Minister. Amen. Zone. Praise the Lord. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Sunday school lesson preview, August 25th, uh, lesson 13, Titus 3 through 11. I'm going to try to come back and finish up with the omitted verses uh, that's uh, not in the lesson. First two verses. Uh, I intend to do that. But the intro background. Paul has in mind the turbulent character of the Cretans, of which a, one historian tells us they were constantly involved in insurrections, murders, listen to this, man, murders <laughs> and wars, <laughs> man. <laughs> and we talking about, we have a problem with, with church folks. <laughs> Crete had been subjected to Rome in 67 B.C., and since then had been continuously inclined to resist authority or the control under the Roman polity yoke. But now, through Titus, Paul tells them to be submissive to their rulers. Uh, what Titus is to remind the people uh, was to be concerned about their social relationship in the world first to the authorities in particular, and then to everyone else. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing, turn it over to Deacon Andy, and then I'll try to have the other slides up with the omitted verses before we finish up. Amen. Thank A amen. Thank you, Brother Pastor. I'll jump right into the scriptures, and we'll uh, circle back to Pastor Shannon. Uh all right, praise the Lord. Here we go. All right, well, this first set of scriptures, uh, it, it it from out the out the gate tonight, uh, I was uh, I was taken back because uh, as as when we look at this lesson, uh, we look at the fact that uh, what Paul as as pastor was saying. Uh, he was attempting to, uh, through his directions to Titus, uh, his his associate, his colleague 
in the spread of the gospel on the island of Crete was uh, as to encourage people to obey authority. We heard pastor talk about that they were pretty much a rebellious type of people, even with wars and, and, and just confrontation. Paul wanted them uh, through Titus. Uh, he, he had given authority over to Titus to uh, uh, carry on the works of spreading the gospel. And uh, he wanted them to be eager for good works, uh, live with gentleness and meekness. We can see that over in Titus 3, 1 and 2. And the worst thing, the worst thing that could occur would be for controversies to arise and distract the believers in Crete from focusing on the gospel. Amen. Scripture. Uh, this is Titus 3. Uh, this is verse 1. No, this is verse 3. Uh, and and, and it, it starts out, it, it, it starts off heavy hidden, if I can use that term. Watch this. I read scripture. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Now, in order to highlight the power of the gospel, Paul Paul had to first acknowledge our human situations. Now, every person has sin, and that's in Romans 3.23, and I'll look at that in a moment. And no one is entirely righteous. No one is entirely righteous. That's over in Romans 3.10. And by then stating in the scripture, we too, we too, us, me, you, Paul included himself as among those who had sinned. And uh, let's just let's let's go over here to Romans and look at just a few of these scriptures. Romans 3:23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory. Romans 3:10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Mercy, Lord. Romans 7, 22, 25 states, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. For the wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me, us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Good graces of life. Thank you, Jesus. So, so uh, here we can see that Paul described the, the, the condition of human sin by using what he called a vice list, of a list of wrongs, a list of things you shouldn't do. Such lists, many different ones, often appear in the writings of Paul and we can find those throughout scriptures, Romans 1, 29, 31, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10, Galatians 5, 19, 21, Galatians 26, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 2 through 5. And by one account, the New Testament contains 23 of such vice lists. Paul does not use these lists to imply that every person has committed every sin listed. Instead, the lists paint word pictures 
reminding us of the many ways that sin has affected the world in our hearts. Sin, sin can lead people to deceive themselves regarding right and wrong. That's in Isaiah 520. Therefore, Paul frequently warns against being deceived. We can see this in 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and Galatians 6, 7. Such deception, such decept, such self-deception, when we fool and trick, when we humor, I think the commentators start off talking about humoring ourselves into death it's because for, for not acknowledging our sinful way. Because such, such self-deception causes people to come captive to all kinds of passions and pleasures that come from a sinful world. And uh, it says, compare Titus 2.12 from our previous lesson in 12. I want to see, let me see here if I uh, got some of these scriptures. So we go back. If we look at just the sinful nature of who we are, in Isaiah 5.20, it says this, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 1 Corinthians 15.23, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. That's almost like uh, 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 the uh, the living bread, <laughs> just one piece. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, bad company. Galatians six seven six seven. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reap what he sowed. And then in Titus 2.12, it teaches us to say, no, this is the opposite to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Amen. Amen. That's, that's deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus Christ. Scripture 3b, we live in malice and envy, being hated, and hating one another. So sin not only affects a person's mindset and actions, but also his or her relationship with others. Malice and envy are feelings of wickedness directed at another person. Lord, have mercy rather than be filled with love for others, see 1 Corinthians 13, 4, the envious person becomes filled with hate that leads to further sin. And that's in James 13, 14, 16. It says that, well, I want to go back to the other scripture. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not pride, proud. Love is something, y'all. Especially godly love. The love of God, as we're going to see as we go further into the lesson, that his love is unique. <laughs> Amen. I think that's what it's, 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 it's uncomparable love. You know, his love that he has for humanity. Uh, James 3, his brother, God, Jesus, the brother, stepbrother, Jesus, James 3, 14, 16 said this, but if you harbor, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. 16, for where you have envy and self-ambition, 
There you find disorder in every evil practice. Amen. As clear as clear can be. So, so uh, you know, uh, uh, rather than be filled with love for others, the envious person becomes filled with hate that leads to further sin. Now, the verse, this verse is only is the only occurrence, is the only occurrence in the New Testament of the underlying Greek word translated as being hated. So, so uh, God hates wickedness. And that was in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. And uh, I'll go to that because I saw I had it highlighted. Uh, God, there are six things. Yes, amen. Amen. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, there are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush in the evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community is what the Lord hates. Amen. This is straight from the word. So, so now, uh, uh, earlier uh, in this letter, Paul remarked on the wickedness of the Cretans uh, over in Titus 1.12 at the beginning of, of last week. In the verse before us, though, the apostle made it clear to Titus that without God's grace, all people, including Titus and Paul, were no better than the Cretans. They were all sinners. Amen. We are all sinners. But for the grace of God, uh, verse 4, amen, praise him. Praise the holy name. I feel my help coming on. God's response, verses 4 through 7, we look at this. It says, but when the kindness and love of God, our Savior appeared. Mm, mm, mm. But when the kindness and love of our God, our Savior appeared. But when points to a change of status for humanity. Amen. The previous verse's description of human sin does not have to be the final status for humanity. Instead, instead, God has provided a way uh, to free us from sin and evil. No one is before God or smarter than God. God has the solution to everything. Amen. Because this this divine initiative for salvation arises from God's character, particularly his kindness and love, his unique love. This truth is the core of our faith. The ultimate example of God's kindness comes through God sending his son Christ Jesus to pay sin's price through the sacrifice of God on the cross. We can see that in Ephesians at Romans 3, 21 through 26, and Ephesians 2, 7. Uh, this di display, this God's display of kindness would lead humanity to repentance. Let me see if I if I had anything on this. Yes, I just had a few of these scriptures. In Romans 3, 21 to 26, I'm not going to read all of this, but 
Just, just look at look at the goodness of the Lord. Because this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. He believe. This is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the God. Amen. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Amen. Amen. Praise his holy name. So, so humanity, uh, humanity no longer had to live in darkness of sin. Instead, the grace, kindness, and love of God, our Savior, have been displayed through Jesus Christ for our salvation. And it says, see Timothy uh, 1, 9, and 10. And if we look at that, it says that he has saved us, called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of our own purpose and grace. Hey, dig it in. Thank you, froze up on it. Then you dig, dig. I think he froze up on it. Did he, did, he, did he freeze, Minister Terrence? Yes, it's frozen. I can't hear him. Okay. 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 All right, D. You, you froze up on us. Uh, large circle of let me see here. Public address loudspeaker at six. Okay. I think he's coming back. I think he's going to log off and come back on. Man, the devil's trying to get this lesson, brother Terrence. He, I, I yeah. couldn't even get my, I couldn't get my slides up, man. From the very and, beginning. Uh, right now, now, um, now he's trying to knock Deacon, Deacon, and it over. But I, I, yeah. I, I I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged when 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 things go wrong when you're trying to do God's will, you know. Fight as he did it in the beginning. He did it in the, in the book of Acts. He tried to stop them. There he's you a, go. Okay. He's a liar. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I encourage churches, man. Uh, if it was easy, if it was easy, that means you going in the same direction he, uh, the devil's going in. <laughs> Yeah. Now, if you attack him, if you if you are afraid to him, he's going to attack you. Amen. Amen. He's going to get you. He's going <laughs> to get you. I mean, I was loading up, and I was almost finished loading up my omitted verses, and and then I couldn't hear Deacon Andy. Yeah. And I looked over, and he was he was froze. And I said, "Okay, okay, he's probably going to going to come back come back on with us uh, in a minute." Yeah. Uh, seeing is that this is. That's sin is a stain on, the, on mankind. You see what I'm saying? Sin okay. is, is a real stain on man, on the human race. Yes, 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 yes. And he, he'll use, he'll use Jesus, circumstances. And he'll use things like this to discourage us and, and make us want to give up. But no, we, those of us who've been on the battlefield long enough to know that no, this is the time to go forward. Oh, yeah. That's right. Amen. I mean, I mean, when I was young in, in the ministry, something like this, man, I wanted everything to go smoothly. Didn't want any bumps in the road. And then I realized uh, that's not the way this works. This journey is not like this. We we are going against the grain. We're going against the wind. Jesus, our our, our master, he faced a lot of opposition. You remember? That's he, right. He opposition. They followed him. They tried to figure out where he was just to oppose him. <laughs> that's right. That's right. With everything, you know. That's right. That's so right. Yeah, Deacon. Uh, 
Dick and Andy was uh was working on that was working on that lesson and Dale just knocked him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what he can off, use. man. That's all he can use against us. He can't shut up our mouth. That's right. That's right. But now this is a wonderful lesson. Uh Cretans were uh uh a town and you know they were an area and when you when I looked at this lesson I realized that thinking that we have some problems you know, <laughs> you know it's nothing in compared to what uh, Paul and Tim and Paul and Titus had to go through. Yep. Uh, you know and it, and it's it's always good to remind ourselves that uh God has blessed us beyond measures. Mm -hmm. Amen. And compared to the way people who had to pave the foundation for us. I was reading something about, I think it's in Luke, where, you know, when, when they, they, they heard how Jesus was performing miracles and um, the, the word, it, it, it got to Herod and he go like, who's that guy doing this? And they, they begin to suggest it must be um, John the Baptist. It must be Moses, um, Elijah. And, and Herod go like, I don't know. He said, no, it can't be John the Baptist. I cut his, I took his head off. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Interesting. I'm going like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't stop the Lord. I mean, he's going to, he's, he's, got a, he's got a mission. And he's going to complete that mission. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that oh, is something. He's, he is going to complete his mission. Yes, sir. And, he and, will. And, and, it's, and, and we have to be concerned. He's going to complete He's going to complete it with or without us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's so, right. So, so it's it's up for us to stay stay on with uh, uh, mm -hmm. with the Lord. Uh, yeah, I, got right. little, I got one little I got one little 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 addition. And I'll I'll share the screen. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm right there. Let's go ahead. We won't let the enemy stop us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen. Uh, let me see what I what did I get to here? Okay. All right. Let me see what I got. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Can I see? Can I share? See, can I share? Yeah, it's coming in here. You got there. It's coming yeah. in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's coming in. Hold on. Let me see. Paul has his what I'm going there, to do. Um, yeah. If if it uh, let me see if I uploaded them. Okay. What I'm going to do to Deacon Andy if he makes it back. What I'm going to do. I'm going to share with the two omitted verses. That that helps uh, uh, serves as an intro to to the body. What uh, what we what we're talking about until Deacon Andy gets back. Uh, and I'm going to be using the English Standard Version as my default version. Okay. Uh, let me start out with the first verse, Titus three one. Yeah, I'm right there. Uh, Follow. Me. Yeah. Okay. Remind them to be submissive. Mm -hmm. to rulers and authorities and to be subject to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one and to avoid quarreling and to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all all people okay let me go in here now this implies that they should already know when Paul says remind them it implies that they already know these things and they should recognize them as genuine implications of the gospel. And most of the time, I remind uh, us that when we're teaching the Bible, uh, repetition is the best teacher. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of times we want to be original. You know, we want to, you know, we don't want to repeat the same thing. But teaching the word is not like the world teaching. We want people to get it. And and sometimes you have to go over 
go over. And that's the way people learn. That's what you learn mm -hmm. in school, by going over and over what you learn. So Paul reminds them of what they already know. Mm -hmm. uh, he reminds them of their obligation as believers living in this uh, uh, yeah. this this world that they were living in, the Cretans uh, being uh, coming out of war. You, you, you know it's going to be a lot of angry people. Yeah, yeah. And and so Paul has to make his mind. Okay. Okay. All right, digging in. Digging in. Yeah, well, I'm going on with those. I'm going on with those couple of verses. Okay, when you get back on, I'm, I'm still going on with these verses that was omitted until you get back on. Okay. Uh, well, don't worry about that. No, we 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 talk about we talk about how the enemy is uh, he's supposed to attack us. If everything's going smooth, man, so we're doing something wrong. Go ahead and get back on. We'll 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 work with you till you get back on. Okay. All right, that was digging and Andy calling in. Oh, yeah. and, oh he was apologizing. I told him, "No, we just been talking about that." We, oh yeah, we still it, have the it, we have the fire still underneath that part. <laughs> yeah, man. It, 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 I told him, "Man, no, this is part of the battle." But anyway, uh, Paul reminds them of their obligations as believers, and he lays it out. Mm -hmm. uh, first obligation is to be. It's to be number one. What Paul does uh, through Titus is to remind the Cretan of their obligation as believers, as Christians. And uh, uh and we're to do the same thing because we got the same word, the same, the same directions that uh 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 Paul gave to Titus, he left it to us, okay, as believers. So first obligation is to be subject. To governing authorities. And this word here, submissive to rulers and authority. Now, a lot of people get a problem with that word yield, submissive, but it just simply means yield. Uh, you got a lot of, uh, uh, I know a lot of women, they don't want that word yield. It's a biblical word. It says, it says uh, uh, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little later on. But you can't throw out... Uh, what the Bible says because of, of, of a modern world not understanding God's word. It's our job to teach the word. He said, and it, it simply means to yield to earthly rulers and authorities. And we were talking about, Minister Terrence and I was talking about there are other rulers and authorities, principalities, and that's evil. But here he's talking about earthly rulers and authorities, and we are to yield to them, okay? The second obligation in verses one and two uh, is that uh, the Cretans are to be obedient. And that's defined as active form of the verb to place under, to be subordinate, to be subject. Okay? So if we're going to be believers, we have to, we have to submit ourselves to the authority that God has established. And he established uh, the authorities in the world as long as they are acting according to his rule. Government has been established by God. We, we can vote for who we want to vote for, but the, the Bible tells us God is the one who established kings and authorities, presidents. He is the ultimate one who established authority, whether we like them or not. Uh, we could do our civic part, but God is the one that put people in control. Okay, they don't even put themselves in control. Third, the third obligation is that they are to be ready for every good work. Now, look at this word be ready. It means we're to be eager, not reluctant. Look at the word every good work. Okay, now listen at this here. Now, that's where we break, break it down when you start talking about being submissive. When you start talking about being obedient to authority, to worldly, to earthly authority, 
then we what we have to do is understand what, what did Paul say? For every good work, not only does it clarify our responsibility, our responsibility, but here there is a limitation of what we are to submit to and what we are to be obedient to. Okay, we need to keep that in mind. We're not to do everything that people who are over us tell us to do. Now, let me go into further on that. There are situations where wives have a biblical ground not to submit to their husband. Okay? Now, when it says submit to her husband, it says as unto the Lord. He's not to submit to her. And then it says submit to her own husband in Ephesians 5. He's not to submit to just any man uh, as, as a, a wife. As a wife, she used to only submit to her husband. Okay? And then when it comes to the, the worldly authority, we are only to submit to them as long as they are according to God's word. All right? The same undoubtedly the hold true for believers in relationship to the government. Sometimes it is necessary to go against earthly authorities uphold the divine will. Look what happened. Look at here some illustration. The Hebrew midwives feared God and did not obey Pharaoh when he told them to get rid of the male children. Okay? When he told them to get rid of the male children and when Moses' mother, he did not obey uh, uh, Pharaoh uh, to get rid of Moses. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they would not bow down in Daniel 3. When Daniel prayed despite the king's edit, okay, there are times that you should not obey and subject yourselves to the authority if it's not according to God's will. Okay? So, da so Daniel would not stop praying just because the king gave an order for him to stop praying. And then it says, when Peter and John they kept preaching after being ordered to be silent. You find that in the book of Acts 18 and 20. Because over the past century, history offers numerous examples of godly and justifiable civil uh, disobedience on the parts of Christians. Uh, Bonhoeffer, the theolo uh, Greek theologian, was in opposition to the Nazis. Cora Ten Boom and her family hid Jews from the terrorists. Uh, North American Christians defying racial segregation laws during the civil rights movement of the 1960s are the Christian martyrs in numerous nations refusing to renounce their faith and paying the consequence of criminal penalty for their righteousness. Even some of them were put to death for not disobeying God's word and obeying man's law. So there are times we will not be subjected to man's law. Okay? Uh, now the fourth obligation and that Christians are to speak evil of no one. So that's something we should be mindful of. Then we go back here, we'll pick up the verses, but not to speak evil of no one. And uh, we are to avoid quarreling. You see that on there? We are to to avoid quarreling. That's number that's number five of our uh, Christian obligations. Now avoid quarreling, avoid quarreling here uh, means conscious mode to respond that allows one to resist taking a violent force in a difficult situation. That means sacrificially in order to save 
relationships. Okay? So we wish to avoid all. And then we are to be gentle. See, it didn't upload all the uh, uh, texts I was trying to upload. Uh, number six, the Christians are to be gentle. And that means, uh, the NIV says, be considerate. That's an attitude that's quiet, that's a quiet personal concerns to make room for other people's concerns. We, we should not be just concerned about what we're concerned about, but we should consider what other people are concerned about. And then number seven is, is we should show perfect courtesy toward all believers, all people, okay? Perfect courtesy toward all people. And the... the uh, the legacy I, had, I had a question. Sorry, my mic was muted. That's why he wasn't hearing me. So okay. I'm happy you bring that up because I, I do have a um not a question, but that when 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 you know, like sometime we see pastors or or, or or church leaders or even Christian, they have that kind of a physical and verbal um I would I would call it behavior against mm -hmm. government and against leaders. And to me, Paul, I, I never saw he had that kind of um, you know, reaction towards the leaders. He always spoke like you were saying, polite and respectful. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you hear those guys, the way they talk, it's almost like they 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 um they want to, to be physically involved in, 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 in some kind of you know what I mean? Um corruption right. or or this to disrupt certain things, or they they want it's, it's almost like they want to revolt in a, in a, some kind of war against the government. Right, but right. we never saw right. that in the back. That's right. That's right. That's right. So and I'm that's that's that's, that's that's that's. I'm glad you bring that up. That's that's a beautiful that's a beautiful uh, reminding us, and Paul is reminding us, and he's using this church, this uh, this church that's. Humanly, human, when you think about it humanly, uh, they were very, very upset that they were under the uh, dominant control of uh, of Rome. You, you know, so they were rebellious. I mean, they were they were very rebellious of being under control of Rome, and they didn't they didn't like that. They didn't like that. And so what Paul is doing, he's reminding them uh, of how they all should, should react, just what you were saying, as believers. You know, we are to be examples, and we are to be model uh, Christians, a model example to the world. And that's something for us to, uh, to, to consider. Uh, and then he said, uh, the last one he says, let me go over here, get back on my, get back on my hand out here. The last one he says is to be, to show perfect courtesy toward all people. And look what he says here. And what you're saying, uh, uh, Minister Terrence, we are to be examples. We are to show. We are to demonstrate. Yeah. Okay. Humility. Humility. Right. You said it right. You said it right. Yeah. Yeah. We are to demonstrate humility. Uh, and this means a perception of oneself that makes it possible to regard others as more important. Matter of fact, the uh, the legacy standard version says uh, perfect. Uh, courtesy through humility consider consider other people uh, more important than ourselves if we, if we thought like that we, we would get along man if we thought about putting others before ourselves uh, we would get along a lot better uh, yeah, in the I'm, world the purpose is to win people for Christ so how do That's we right. win people Right, if we become hostile towards them. 
That's that's right. That's right. People would people would look at us uh, in a different way if our attitude toward them would change. Okay, I don't know what verse uh, Deacon and them. I'm not sure what verse Deacon Andy uh, stopped on. Um, I can't remember was, which he was in Titus. Is it Titus? No, not Titus. Is it Romans three ten? Three, yeah, he was in, yeah, but he, but the main lesson was coming from Titus three, yeah, I do Titus chapter that. three, yeah, verse okay. one to two, and then in chapter three to three, yeah. Okay, the main lesson was in. Okay, well, let me go here, and let me look at these my notes here, and we'll finish it up. But I think it only goes to eleven, right? It only goes to verse 11, 3 through 11. So let me look at it here. Verse 3 through three through 7. Okay, verse 3 through 7. Mm -hmm. uh, it reads here the gospel basics. Paul explains how his exhortation to God the living are based on the gospel. Mm -hmm. This gospel statement is presented as a a traditional conversion of formal, formally but now, highlighting the ethical and practical change expected by grace. Ain't that some? Yeah. This this is what grace does for. In other words, when God saves us, that is an effectual work. It affects us some kind of way. You know, we're just mm -hmm. not saved to be saved. We're affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's right. A ain't, ain't that some? You like like and, and like. It, We've been saturated. It's like a sponge. It, it saturates with the water if you put it in there. And, and you know, when you squeeze it, it releases that water. So believers, when we get saturated with God's presence, when we go under pressure, we release mm -hmm. whatever the fruit of God out of our lives. Yes, the sir. Fruit of yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And uh and it says here. That uh, but when goodness and love and kindness, God of God our Savior, peer goodness and love and kindness stand in stark contrast uh, to lost humanity. The difference is due to the appearance of God our Savior. And verse five reads, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. That's mm -hmm. what you were just talking about. You see that? Mm -hmm. the transformation. Mm -hmm. He says transformation describes in, in three through seven. But now, it's not based on human effort. Mm -hmm. We're not saved on human effort. But we no. were enslaved. But he saved us. God must act before salvation occurs. Salvation comes not because of works, but by the washing and regeneration of the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Some have understood this as the baptism of the washing causing salvation. However, in the context, human deeds are clearly downplayed, not because of works, and the emphasis is on the divine action. See, the emphasis is always on the divine action. He no, saved a, us. <laughs> if you mind, if you mind, go that's ahead, a go good ahead. point. I love what you go just ahead. said because the reason why I, 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 I tried to stop you, not not I didn't want to do go that. Ahead. No, that's good. That's good. We need that. Different doctrines and, and uh, beliefs of some people. They believe that people can lose their salvation. Now, mm. uh, that you, what, what you just stated in there, if we are not saved by human effort, and it mm -hmm. is a divine intervention. Yes. How can you lose something that you did not gain on your own merit or strength yes. or will? And it has been given to you. Jesus said, he, everyone that comes to me, my father, he, he draws them. <clears throat> so if God draw, draw you to his son, yes. they, you have to meet certain criteria in a sense of just faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So That's if right. you criteria of believing because he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He never said that you're going to save yourself. 
but That's the right. Lord to save you. So how could God save you? I'm trying to understand that. It's not because I don't know. How God right. would save right. you, and tomorrow he goes like, okay, you you don't deserve my salvation. I'm, I'm you know, you gonna, I'm, I'm going to take it back from you. When he saved well, us, while we were in sin, like Ephesians chapter 2 says, while we right. were dead in trespasses and sin, he saved us. So now, right. if I'm his child, what makes, what gives, you know, why, why, if I'm his child right now and I did something against his will, mm -hmm. whatever it is, why should he take salvation away from me? You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm right, his son. Right. That's so, right. So I don't know that. It's a great discussion there. I don't know what you believe that is. That, that, that right there is, uh, uh, is pretty much what we were talking about last week. Remember when we talked about those two different models and beliefs, the Aramanians and Calvinism? Yeah, That's yeah. some of the beliefs that they have, some of the mixture they have. One one group mm -hmm. believe that you can, you can be saved and lose your salvation. And the other group uh, believe that once you're saved, you're if you're truly saved, that's what that's what they believe. But if mm -hmm. you're truly saved, and that's where I think uh, I come down on that if a person is really saved, and yeah. I think if a person can, can stray away from his salvation, I don't think he, that person was saved in the first place. Thank you. That's the way Thank I look you. at it. I agree that's with you. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I that's agree. the way I see it. Yeah. That's the way I see it. Look, so let me let me read the rest of this here. Uh, yeah, verse, is so verse five. No, that's good. Then we'll finish it up. We got comments on verse eight. Uh, verse uh, six reads, Whom poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, mm -hmm. we have become heir, man, to the hope of eternal life. Man, that's something. That's it. That's something. That's right. And verse 8 says, and and the saying is trustworthy. And I want uh, you to <laughs> insist on these things. He's telling Timothy, he's telling him to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for believers. That's a summary command to insist on these things. Both statements carry a significant tone of authority. You see, I say this all the time. The authority does not come from the preacher. It comes from God's word. And yes. if a person right. is not uh, preaching God's word, then we don't have to abide by that authority. All right, Deacon Andrew, what you got? Can you come in? Can you hear me, Pastor? Come on. Yeah, we can hear you. Where did you stop at? What verse you stop at? We, we got verse stop. 8. Okay, you're at verse 8. I, I can't get my video going. Uh, I'm having some serious problems over here. My whole internet has just crashed. Well, what, what, what can you what, can you tune in? I can finish it up. We we, we first 8, and we, we, we're looking at uh, starting with verse 9 and 11, and then you can comment. Yeah, I yeah, go ahead, up. Pastor. Yeah, yes, okay, sir, let go me, ahead. Let me, That's beautiful. Let me finish up. Yes, sir, go ahead. Here. I'm good. Okay. Uh, finishing up with verse 9 and 11, let me give a summary of it uh, before I get into it. Um, problem restated. False teachers. Paul returns to the problem of false teachers. Ain't that something? He always he's dealing with false teachers constantly throughout his right. Thus, the, the discussion of the gospel living is flanked by discussion of those who claim to believe this gospel but fail to live it out. In other words, you got to do both of them. It's not just enough to, to talk about it. It's just not enough to say we believe it. We have to live it out. The evidence is in our living out. So verse 9, verse 9, verse 9 here. Paul says, but the word, but avoid. Listen at this, man. He says, avoid foolish controversies, yes. genealogy, dissensions, and quarreling about the law. For they only are unprofitable and worthless. Look at what he said here. He said, uh, they are useless uh, of correct doctrine sets the contrast 
with worthless nature of false teaching. In other words, we don't need to spend our time arguing uh, with foolishness. Amen. Amen. Okay. As, F, as elsewhere in the letter of Timothy and Titus, the exact sun, content of false teaching is not clear. The point is that it is foolish, unprofitable. Un in other words, it's it's not, you know, you can't go through life learning every false doctrine. What you need to know is what's solid. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, I, you know, remember I told you I used to go in the store when I was younger and I would have a hundred dollar bill and, and the cash, she would take that hundred dollar bill and hold it up. Uh, what she was doing was, was uh, uh, making sure that it was a, 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 a real true hundred dollar bill. bill. Not counterfeit. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have to know what every counterfeit looked like. She knew what the real thing looked like. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So when you know what the real thing looked like, okay, then then you 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 ensure you're sure of what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to you don't have to be arguing over this and that, over this, over counterfeit. You present what's real and what's true, what's authentic. Okay. Oh, and then say, as for a person who stirs up division, uh, you see how he keep going? Because he, he did with that last week. After warning him once, and we on the slide first. After warning him once and twice, then have nothing to do with him. Mm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at here. Oh. Have nothing to do, and then verse uh, what was that? Verse ten. Have nothing to do with them, knowing that such a person is walked in sinful. He is self-condemned. Mm. That a person like that condemns themselves. It's not for us to condemn them. It's not for us to try to argue with them. It's our job is, is to uh, present the word to them. And then if they don't listen to us when we go to them uh, the tw twice, then leave them alone. Have nothing more to do with them. Describing the final stage of church discipline. Ain't mm. that something? That's such thing as church discipline. But we must do it according to God's word. Not something that we make up. Not because we don't like the person. Or, uh, uh, we got a family arrival with the person. None of that. It's only according to God's word. And you can find this principle in, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, when Paul was dealing with the sexual immoral, immoral curse. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you see what I'm saying? How you all deal with it. You don't condone sin. You, you do according to the Bible. Because that's not helping the individual. In other words, the people put up with my foolishness and my wrong, they're not helping me as a, as a belief. Mm -hmm. They're enabling me. Mm. They, they're enabling me to stay in my problem, stay in my sinful situation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's church discipline is important. A divisive person who refuses to repent, look at that word repent, mm. and change after being confronted. And notice what we find is from Matthew. Go to a brother and sister. You see any church discipline? Mm -hmm. To show himself to be twisted by sin. And sin can twist you, man. It can, it can, it can warp you. You see what it said? A person can be, can be twisted by sin. Ain't that something? Mm. So we'll not get caught up in things like that. The person should repent. Self-condemn. The New Testament makes it clear about seeking the repentance of such people, but it is equally clear that refusal to receive rebuke eventually shows. Let me tell you something. If I'm in the wrong and I, and I refuse to be corrected, it shows that I'm really not in Christ and must be excluded from the Christian community. Man, that's mm. something. That's, ooh, mm. that's hard. Mm. 
That's horrible. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that. We do not want to be excluded from the Christian community. So that shows us that if there's anything in us, if we have salvation, then we will not uh, uh, reject being corrected. But mm -hmm. we all have to be corrected. That's what the word does. The word corrects us. Mm -hmm. Amen. I Me, mean, it ain't all the time having a church meeting. Sometimes we can be convicted just hearing the word. We can be convicted by stuff that we've done. We we don't really know we on the uh, uh, out of bounds with. So that's mm -hmm. something there. So I'm I'm, I'm finished up. Uh, 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 Deacon Andy, come on in and give us some summary of it. Yes, Let sir. Minister Tanner, come in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, brother Pastor. Uh, great lesson. Uh, you know what what really jumped out at me was. You know, we can't waste our time arguing over, I think the scriptures talked about genealogies and mm. and, 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 and and quarrels about the law. And, you know, because uh, uh, the word at scripture nine says that, that that's unprofitable and it's Amen. useless. Uh, what we need to concern ourselves about is what we do on every Thursday night and on Sunday morning. And that's to look at God's word and try to get discernment for his, from his word so that we'll know how to conduct ourselves where we won't be self-condemned. That's Amen. a, that's a hard word that, and, and I think uh, Pastor oh. Shannon also mentioned warped, you know, that you can yeah. be, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can be so hung up in, in, in sinfulness where, yeah. and that's what Paul was talking about, that, yeah. that you don't even see it, you know, yeah. and, and that's that's a that's a serious problem, you yeah. know, because we all have sinned. We are sinful creatures and, and we have to acknowledge our sinful ways in order Amen. to in order to repent, in order Amen. to come to Jesus Christ. So uh, it's a great lesson. I, I'm just, you know, I, I guess I heard y'all say that if we weren't on the right track, then the devil wouldn't bother us. So, amen. amen. So I guess he, he jumped right on me tonight. Uh, amen. I, I, mean, I was scrambling over here trying to figure out how amen. to get this internet back up. And, you know, I'm good at some things, but some things I'm, I'm at a loss. And, um, uh, but anyway, he 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 allowed me to return to to the class tonight amen, and the service amen. under the leadership of our pastor and our good brother minister Vitalis Terrence. Amen. Brother, brother Terrence, how you doing? Amen. Yes, amen. Sir, I heard him. I heard his voice brother, earlier when I was on. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrence, come on right. in. Come on in and help close yeah. this side here. Yes, come sir. in. Yes, sir. All right there. I was just talking to my daughter. She wanted to come on, but I think she didn't. She did not charge her phone. So I said, "I'll call you after the meeting." <laughs> um, but, um, I, you know, I love what you just said there because we were talking about uh, it, it is a, it's something that has been spoken of constantly in different doctrines. You know, uh, because you know where. Uh, oh, she also said if you could forward the lesson to her, that is um, your main. So yes, yes, you... amen. I'll do that when I send it to you, Minister. Yeah. Right. She said um, she don't want to miss it. She wanted to go over it. So okay. anyway, amen. what I was saying, if um, Pastor Shannon, you brought a good point in reference to um, how we have been saved. So I think what's going on here is some of these this, um, belief they have for Hebrews chapter 6, where it says, um, verse, for, if it, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and have tasted the good word of God and the power of it. Now, I think what they do, they take it out of context because Amen. you remember book chapter 10, um, verse 17 to 20, where those the 70 that he gave authority, they would have, they said, go and um, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devil, and so forth. So they were mm -hmm. rejoicing, right? Because mm -hmm. they okay. saw that ever submit to them. You remember? And he said, well, mm -hmm. so Satan kept falling down like lightning and so forth. But he said, the most important point is don't rejoice because um, you know, you see the devil submit to you by casting out devil. But he said, rather rejoice 
because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Now, the point is, um, because God used, or, or being used by God to do certain things, that don't mean you are saved. <laughs> so, All right, I, amen. I believe some people, because they see that person partake in certain things that has been done in the church, they say, okay, that person is saved. But we are not saved by work. So whatever Man. works you manifest that don't save you. You have to have a personal relationship with God. And the only way that can be done, it is by accepting his son because he makes you the, he gives you the way to the Lord, the Father. Amen. Actually. So he's Amen. the way. So you can't have Jesus in your life. Mm. And once Jesus comes in your life, then the Holy Spirit comes in because he says, When I leave you, you'll not uh, you'll not be left comfortless. But I will send you another person, which is, you know, the Holy Spirit, and he will be with you. So like Amen. you said, I'm, I'm Pastor Shannon, if, if it is a divine intervention, how would mm -hmm. God grant us salvation or give us salvation yeah. when we were sinners, when we were without strength? But now, mm -hmm. because we've done something wrong, he's going like, okay, I'll take that salvation back from you. Because mm -hmm. it was, you are not worthy of it when we are not saved by works. Yeah. So I, I just right. love I wanted to just That's bring beautiful. that in. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. This is a beautiful lesson, man. Let me let me let me close it out tonight, man. We'll we'll see y'all next next time. But this was uh this this lesson when I started looking at the background and reminding myself of the background of oh. these freaks out here. Man, murder and I mean it was war. I mean, I'm <laughs> butchering the Roman man. Roman, they were giving Rome, bro. Oh, this is the context. This is the context. A church plant come out of. This is this is what they come out of, and that's what that's what we talk about salvation. Mm -hmm. This is what they come out of. So now they need to teach it. Okay, they got everything on the inside of, them, but they still need the, the word of God to supplement that. So that's beautiful. To show them how they ought to live. And they can only do that, like like uh, saying, if they have the Spirit of God in them. So anyway, I won't hold you any longer. Uh, uh, Minister Terrence, if it, nothing else, would you call us out with prayer? Amen. You mean? She needs prayer, so I told her, okay, we'll pray for her once we're done. So I'd like you to lift her up in prayer. She's she's really under the water. She's faced with um, some mm. challenges, so... Let's pray for my family, actually, on the whole. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 Oh, I forget to tell you. So my grandson is doing very well. Thanks for the prayer. Okay. Okay. He's excited. Okay. Just, you know, he's all over his grandma. He's doing well. He's happy. And oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Pneumonia that's great. is not, Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's sleeping well, you know. Thank God for that. Yeah, that's great. But did uh, Mr. Stamps, did you hear me for I wanted you to close us out of prayer? Did you hear me? Can oh, you I'm do so that for sorry. I'm so that's sorry. Right. I you said you were gonna pray. Okay. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> pray. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. Thank yes, you for yes, your man servant, Lord, and minister and Pastor Shannon and also Dick and Hill. Thank yes, you for thank the you. love. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Lord, for the compassion. Thank yes, you for the work that you've done in their life, and we know you are not finished. You're still working on each and every one of us. Yes. So sir. I pray, Father, you continue to pour your grace, you continue to pour your mercies and your compassion. More importantly, the wisdom of God. Help us, Lord. We will walk in your fear because we know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. So help us, Lord, that we will not lose that focus. I pray you bless their their bodies which is your temple, and your temple ought to be holy. Your temple ought to be healthy. Your temple ought to be sanctified. So, Lord, we pray you'll touch from our the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Thank you yes. for this lesson, Lord. Thank you for the commitment and the devotion, Lord, that they make, Father. We know you said to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly yes. divided. Rightly dividing, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And as yes. we have that word in our hearts, we may not sin against you. So we thank you. Even as we're about to 
depart from each other on, on this platform, not from your presence. May you go before us, protect us from the attack of the enemy, Lord. It be your will. Yes. We we have another session next Thursday. We pray, yes. Lord, it will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All Amen. right. Y'all have a good one. God bless. All right. Now, thanks. You too. All God right. bless.